Here's a question. Can you name the most absorbable noble metal on the planet? What is a noble metal? What does that even mean? We were taught that metals are bad for us, but that's not true. We need almost all kinds of metal in our bodies, and they, they do very specific, very important things. Noble metals right now are becoming a new frontier in nutraceutical science, but not just nutraceutical science, pharmaceutical science. Words like ormus and terms like DNA repair, life extension, are all receiving phenomenal attention. Some of these realms of study actually seek the holy grail of nutrition and medicine, which would be a delaying of the aging process or a reversing of the aging process. They're using many of these noble metals to improve the cytotoxic effects of antibiotics. This special noble metal that I'm talking about has revolutionized Lyme disease treatment. I can only talk and attest to about, about what I've personally witnessed. And this noble metal saves lives. It's patented as a molecule because as an element, it rapidly oxidizes. The molecule is called cuprous nicotinic acid, or me and you know it as a copper niacin complex. Copper ordinarily cannot exist in an ionized form. Rapidly oxidizes at faster than any other metal. One attribute that maybe amplifies its therapeutic benefits is in fact this rapid oxidation. I am linking so many studies about this. But how many of us have bought those copper bracelets? And how many of us no longer wear those copper bracelets? How can regular copper be of such little importance after all this hype? And then another form of copper seemingly light years ahead. Well, this compound was first manufactured and developed in Egypt. In fact, the molecule itself, copper cuprous nicotinic acid, is found in plants, although there are other copper enzymes that can be isolated out of plants. What is valuable about this copper one is that it absorbs directly into the nucleus of cells. Now that's saying a lot because the cells intentionally try to prevent things from reaching the nucleus. And when we try to make drugs to penetrate the nucleus, um, that's usually because we're trying to kill cancer cells. And this absorption is amazing to watch under a microscope. The absorption is a property that even pharmaceutical industries and pharmaceutical companies are envious and drooling over. Because they're seeking to achieve that kind of absorption in their anti-cancer drugs. And in fact, they're starting to tag some anti-cancer drugs with ionized metals. Copper One has so many biological uses that human beings cannot possibly survive without copper. And a lot of the time, we take Straight copper too can be easily toxic. In small amounts it isn't, but in moderate, moderate amounts it is. And in the body, copper two can be converted to copper one in the liver. But mainly, copper is found attached to other enzymes and other proteins. It's chelated by proteins. Copper generally exists in the body attached to amino acids, and certain antiperoxide enzymes. Of these enzymes, superoxide dismutase, otherwise known as SOD. This is found in red blood cells and it protects red blood cells from oxidative stress. Without SOD, our red blood cells would not live to their 120 day life expectancy. 
Ionized copper is absorbed so quickly into red blood cells, it seems as if it was meant to. But it, now that you understand that the enzymes inside of red blood cells contain copper-bound enzymes, now it becomes understandable why copper absorbs into red blood cells. Copper is also readily utilized in the mitochondria. And mitochondrial insufficiencies have been linked to cancer, muscle wasting, cardiac myopathy. Copper insufficiencies have been linked to vascular collapse and susceptibility to infection, amongst other disorders. But many things may be impacted by ionized copper, and the studies are just beginning. Many conditions may be reversed because copper cross-link elastin with collagen, forming new tissue, aiding in the formation of new blood vessels, new blood vessels. The, this impact of growing new tissue is so predominant that some people are calling copper one a stem cell activator. Tinnitus, skin conditions, acne, muscle wasting, diseases, Lyme disease, Lyme disease management, are all huge topics of interest among bioscience people today. Antibiotics, improved antibiotics, Parkinson's, non-alcoholic fatty liver are all being studied with relationship to the effectiveness of copper one. They're all being studied to see if copper one can reverse, can slow down these conditions. Also being looked at for copper one is the transport of other substance into the cell, bringing a new term, a new meaning to the term, transport molecule. What a benefit for drug delivery that would be. Copper attaches to bacteria. And I before I did any research myself, when I saw how it attached to spirochetes, I automatically knew it would attach to bacillus because the mechanism that attaches it to the ends of these, these bacteria appeared to be a membrane polarity, membrane potential, electromagnetic in nature. If one end of the organism is positive and the other end is negative, that's a polarized organism. And copper, being ionized, is influenced by magnetic field. The copper one is drawn in like a magnet to many cells and, and even absorbed through the skin. And we even make an enzyme in our own bodies to absorb copper one through our skins. So if we have an enzyme to help absorb copper one through our skin, I guess we need copper one. So it's pretty well documented, but not very well advertised. Copper is needed to make new blood vessels. Anyone with a high school biology class can begin to see the overwhelming and phenomenal implications for disease management, pain management, tissue repair, immune support, infection control, hair regrowth, muscle building, and endurance for athletes. And don't forget the antimicrobial aspect. Mixing copper one has created products so superior with respect to many conditions and the compounds are completely legal. We are giving the body everything it needs to regrow scar tissue, to regrow nerves, to reverse wrinkles, to restore hair follicles, to repair damaged tissue. It's being studied for the reversal of Parkinson's. It's being studied for the reversal of fatty liver and non-alcoholic fatty liver. Why? Because we're buying, we're providing the body with basic building blocks. DNA repair, new blood vessel formation, and then all of it, all of it accelerated with oxygen donors or pro-oxidant compounds. So if you're soaking an extremity in hot water to dilate your peripheral 
vascular system, niacin dilates your peripheral vascular system as well. So when you put it on your skin, your skin may develop this warm glow that's nothing but increased blood flow to your face. Women putting on our skin moisturizer have reported they've quit wearing makeup. Some have said they look like they have porcelain skin. So if you would like to experiment with some of the raw copper, try to see if it works on your pimples, try to see if it heals wounds, try to see if it can be used in pain creams, please refer to the contact information below. We will be linking pages and pages of research so you get that we're not just talking theory, we're talking truth. And no longer, no longer will we have to hope for wellness, pray for wellness. Now comes a time where we expect wellness. I bid you peace and good health.